Are you tired of those annoying 404 error pages on your site? Well, you should, as they are hurting the user experience and potentially your rankings. So today we'll talk about redirects and how they can help improve your SEO game. First, let me quickly explain what a redirect is. Imagine you're looking for the snack table at the party, but someone tells you it has moved to another room. That is essentially what a redirect does on the web, as it automatically sends users and search engine crawlers from one URL to another. This helps avoid those pesky 404 error pages and keeps your site's traffic flowing. Furthermore, you should use redirects because they play a big part in maintaining your website's authority and rankings in search results. Here's why. When a page links to another one, it passes some of its link equity, also known as page rank and link juice to the receiving page. So if you delete or move a page with backlinks to another URL, you will lose that precious link equity. That's why you should use redirects as they help you maintain as much link value and current rankings as possible. Essentially, when you are using redirects correctly, you are telling search engines like Google that content has found a new home. Trust me, the SEO gods, I mean, Google will appreciate you avoiding those 404 error pages. If you are enjoying this video, consider subscribing. Our goal at SEO testing is to save you time so you spend less time pulling data into Excel and more time thinking about how to get more traffic from Google. Now back to the video, here are the scenarios when you should use redirects. 1. When moving pages. If a page's URL changes, it can be considered that it has been moved. So this applies, for example, when you move content to different menus, changing the website's URL structure. 2. Merging content. You should do this when you combine multiple pieces of content into a single page URL. For example, when fixing keyword cannibalization issues. 3. Deleting pages. When you want to delete thin or low-performing pages from the site, it might be a good idea to redirect them to avoid 404 pages. 4. Temporary offers, sales and landing pages. If your site runs a temporary offer or has a sales page, once the page is removed, you may want to redirect it to another relevant page. Again, avoiding 404 error pages. 5. Redirecting non-secure HTTP requests to HTTPS. HTTPS is the default protocol for most websites and it's recommended to redirect all non-secure traffic to the HTTPS version. 6. Migrating a website. This applies when you might need to move to a different domain, for example when you buy the .com version. 7. Merging a website. If you buy another related website, you may want to merge it with your existing one. This will mean redirecting URLs from the bot website to your existing domain. Before discussing redirects best practices, let's see what types of redirects exist. We can divide redirects in two ways, where they happen, in the server side or client side, and for how long, permanent and temporary redirects. The 301 redirect is a server and permanent redirect, and one of the most commonly used. Therefore, users and crawlers trying to access this URL are automatically sent to a different location than they requested. The 301 redirect is commonly used by SEOs to preserve as much link equity as possible, which is a massive benefit to using them. When search engines detect a page with a 301 redirect, they usually remove it from the search results in favor of the new one. And Google recommends keeping these redirects active for at least one year to allow their crawlers to see the redirect multiple times. But in general, it's okay to leave these redirects in place forever to avoid users accessing the old URL. A 308 redirect code indicates a page moved permanently. This redirect type is also a server-side redirection. In practical terms, a 308 redirect is similar to a 301 with just a small technical difference. Also, Google employees said on Twitter that they treat 301 and 308 redirects similarly, so don't expect any significant difference using either. A meta refresh redirect is used to reload the page or send users to a different URL after a certain amount of time. You should avoid using this client-side redirect as not all browsers support it. And John Mueller wrote that Google recommends using a 301 redirect instead of a meta refresh. A JavaScript redirect is a client-side redirection that pushes users to another URL. Here's how this works. 
First, the browser must load the page's content, followed by the JavaScript, and only then it performs the JavaScript redirection. The downside is that if there is a disruption on any of those steps, the redirect won't happen. On top of that, search engine crawlers can also struggle with processing JavaScript. And that's why it's not recommended to use this method. Instead, it's better to use a 301 or 308 redirect. A crypto redirect is a last resort method when no other redirection option is possible. This type of redirect is nothing more than putting a link and explanation on a body of the page and explaining the content as moved to another place. Use this only when content is moved permanently and you don't have another way to make a redirect, for example, if your CMS doesn't allow permanent redirects. A 302 redirect is a server-side redirection that means content has temporarily moved and you redirect users to a different URL. The difference between a 302 and a 301 is that search engines will keep a page indexed when they find the 302, as the page has only moved temporarily. Therefore, using a 302 is only appropriate if you plan to bring back the old page. For example, you replace a category page with the holiday-specific content and bring the regular page back afterward. 302 redirects do not pass SEO value from one page to another. The exception is if a 302 has been in place for a long time and Google considers it a permanent change. This means someone used a 302 when they should have used a 301. A 307 redirect means content has moved temporarily to another location and this is another server-side redirection. In practical terms, the 307 and 302 redirects perform the same task, so they are the same in the eyes of Google especially as they only have a small technical difference. Now let's see what are the best practices when using redirects. The first one is avoiding redirects as much as possible. By default, redirects spend crawl budget and increase the load time. These are two factors that can hurt your SEO efforts and why you should only use them when necessary. For example, redirect all the HTTP pages to the HTTPS equivalent. This will ensure your website is only available through encrypted and secure links. Another thing you should avoid is creating redirect chains. A redirect chain is when you redirect page A to B, then B redirects to C and so on. A redirect chain isn't beneficial as they say this page is a suitable replacement but that page points to another suitable replacement. A better decision would be to point page A and all the pages in the chain to the final destination URL. This will make pages load faster, save crawl budget and ensure the Google bot can follow redirects. You should also avoid redirect loops. Redirect loops would happen if you redirect pages in a chain and the final page also redirects back to the original URL. Redirect loops also occur when a page accidentally redirects to itself. Redirection loops are not good. They make pages unavailable for navigation, potentially leading to a drop in rankings, losing link equity, and wasting crawl budget. Look at Google Search Console to see if you find any redirect errors. You can also use Sitebulb or Screaming Frog if you don't want to wait for Google Search Console to report the errors. Another best practice when it comes to redirects is to link to relevant pages. If there is no relevant page to link to, consider letting the user see a 404 page. If you redirect the user to a non-relevant page, Google may treat it as a soft 404. This will mean SEO value is not transferred to the destination URL, making the redirect irrelevant. The solution is to create a good 404 page experience by explaining the page or product no longer exists and allowing the user to search and navigate back to the home page to find other related content. And these are the essential things you need to know about redirects. If you want to test and diagnose redirects, use the httpstatus.io tool. Now, if you want to make the most out of your Google Search Console data, use SEO testing to set up SEO tests and know what changes to the site increase traffic. We have a 14-day trial for you to test it. Sign up using the link in the description. Thanks for watching.